Welcome, New York Jets fans, once again to the Midnight Mike Show, coming to you from the Long Island Sound. It is once again rainy, shitty weather we're having here. Um, I feel like we've turned into London, uh, possibly Seattle. I don't know what has happened over the past year, but it's more rain than sun, and it's killing me, seriously. I mean, the last week we had we had some nice sun, and I appreciated that. But go, 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 Jets, fight. We had some uh, some sunny weather, but it was such a short amount of time, and I'm so sick of dealing with rain and torrential downpours and wind. And I mean, even on the days when it's not raining, I feel like I'm getting just cloudy, overcast skies. It's ridiculous. But I want to thank you for joining me here on the Midnight Mike Show, Saturday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am your late night New York Jets host, and I am happy to be here. I am happy that for those of you who turned out uh, Tuesday night at 10, 10 p.m., uh, it was a great show, and I do have some housekeeping on the channel to talk to everybody about. Uh, I want everybody to try and I want to get people to join the memberships on the channel. And in doing so, what I'm going to do later on tonight is I am going to gift out five memberships to the channel to try to get the ball rolling, okay? All you have to do is go down below uh, below this video, and you have to click on, I believe, the money symbol, and it'll give you options, and then you go to memberships, and it's you just have to click allow uh, gifted memberships or something like that. If you don't click that, when I gift these memberships, you're not going to be able to be eligible for them. And it goes to people, I believe, it goes from YouTube uh, algorithms and things like that to who comments, who is, in, you know, talking back and forth with me, who comes on the show, who who hits the like button. By the way, by the way, I want you, if you're watching, to go down and hit that like button. Uh, when I, I love coming off of this show or Tuesday night show and clicking on to check how the show went and seeing those likes. That's why I do this, because I, I, I love hanging out with all of you people. And I love the fact that I expect people in that comment section. There are certain people that I expect to be in that comment section and leaving comments below. And they've become friends of the show, people who are, are constantly talking back and forth with me and Maddie. It's it's much appreciated. It I can't say it enough. So we're going to give some memberships to the channel where you get access to uh, member-only live streams and members-only videos, okay? And our Tuesday night show, which goes live at 10, 10 p.m., we're going to have that live. Everybody can watch that for free. But, you know, the next day at some point, I will take it off of free. And if you want to rewatch the Tuesday shows, uh, you have to be a member to be able to rewatch those shows. This, this show, my first live show on this channel, Saturday nights, 9 p.m., it's not going to change. It's going to be free. It's going to be free for the rewatch. That's never going to change. Okay? We got a few things to talk about, but one of the things I'm most excited about is tonight, one of the biggest Jets content creators on YouTube is going to be joining us here on the Midnight Mike Show. And if you don't know who he is, go check out Jets Central. I mean, this guy... He knows how to get information out. Anytime news breaks from ESPN or one of the you know beat writers or someone, 
you could be sure you go over to YouTube and his video is already out. I don't know how he does it. I'll ask him. It's Ian from Jet Central. will be on the show around 9.15. I haven't put the link out yet uh, for you guys to be able to call in because I, I'm going to wait on Ian. He'll call in. We'll talk for a while. I don't want to hold up his Saturday night. You know, after, you know, some time, I'll let him go and then I'll put that link out there and you guys can call in. And on my old show, my old podcast, when I did 80s and 90s pop culture and horror and, and pro wrestling, I interviewed a lot of celebrities, uh, celebrities, wrestlers, horror movie uh, uh, icons, people like that. And one thing I always like to do when I brought them on the show is do what I called like a lightning round where I just gave them two things to choose from, you know? So I would say like Jets or Giants. Obviously, that's not a question that I'm going to ask Ian. We know that. But I'd say, you know, Jets, Giants, answer. Then I go to another one. Then I go, to, I have one for Ian tonight. And then when he's, when he's, you know, off the show and I put that link out, if you guys want to call in and give your answers to those questions, please feel free. Now, you guys are going to notice that someone, someone is missing from the show tonight. Because they thought that their wife's birthday was more important than the show. I'm, I'm personally offended by that. So I came up with a new, a new game for this week's show. And I think I'm, we're going to have a great time with it. What is that game called? Well, let's start it off. Tonight on the Midnight Mike Show, we are going to play... Job. So you call in after Ian is off the air and uh, see if you can do what Maddie does. See if you can come on here and drink an exorbitant amount of alcohol and talk about the New York Jets. If you can, you may be able to win Maddie's job here on the Midnight Mike Show. It's going to be a great time. All right. So anyway. That's for later in the show. That's for later in the show. Now, the good thing about tonight's show, the thing that I'm liking the most about tonight's show, not only is Ian coming on, not only are we playing Win Maddie's job, not only are we going to be uh, uh, give, gifting out some memberships to this channel where I will be doing some uh, members only, and you go down below, you click, click join if you do want to join. Um, I will be doing some members only streams. I can't promise it's going to be predominantly about the Jets, but there's sometimes that I want to talk like this past week, man. I wanted to talk about that show. Hey, Otani thing. I think he's a little bit more guilty than MLB or anyone else is letting us, you know, letting us in on. Uh, and I was like, oh, I should go home and just do a, just do it, just do a, a live show and talk about it. But then I'm like, nah, I don't want to clog up, you know, I don't want to clog up my, 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 videos or, or live shows with things that aren't necessarily jets because this has turned into a predominantly you know as of right now 100 percent new york jets channel and i would like to keep it that way but if i have this membership thing going on and i can put out live videos that you guys can watch on other topics in sports in movies and whatever it is that would be awesome so go down below and hit that next to the comments. There's a dollar symbol. Hit that. You're not going to pay any money. And find, go to memberships and go to allow gifted memberships. Because five of them are coming from me as a gift to all of you tonight on the Midnight Mike Show. Um, like I said, I am very excited tonight to talk to Ian. I have a bunch of questions for him. Uh, I'd love to talk to him about the state of the New York Jets uh, and, and what, 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 you, what we should expect. Uh, this, this kid's younger than me, but I'll tell you, man, his, his intellect, the way he carries himself, the way he brings out information, it's, he was one of the first Jets content creators that I actually really got into because of, you could always count on him. And that's the thing I like the most about content creators. That's why I'm always here Tuesday nights at 10 PM. I'm sorry, Tuesday nights at 10, 10 PM. That's why I'm always here Saturday nights at 9 p.m. And that's why Maddie's not here tonight because his wife's thing is more important. So we're going to win Maddie's job tonight here on the Midnight Mike Show. Make sure to go and uh, check after Ian gets off the air once again. See if you could be my co-host. 
Now, Maddie has a hard job. Remember, I talked about it earlier. He's not just any co-host. You have to be able to put down alcohol. You have to. You, that's part of the. the I'm going to do that. Watch. I can win Maddie's job. That's nice. All right. Let's stop. Let's stop screwing around. Let's go over to some comments. I see you guys have some comments in here. Oh, hold on. Before I, before I go through the comments, let's take that down. It's not time yet to win Maddie's job. That's coming. Don't worry. Maddie's sweating right now at dinner with his wife. He's like, honey, I got to get home. I, I, I got to get home. Mike's, uh, Mike's about to give away my job. I got to get It's going to happen. Just wait. I bet before Ian even gets on here, we get somebody to take, to take your job. That's what's going to happen, Maddie. Let's go to some of these comments. Oh, look at the excuses. Maddie, sorry I couldn't be there tonight. Oh, no, it's no problem. It's no problem. Good evening, Mike. Jerome. I, 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 when, when, when did I talk to you? Did I talk to you on Twitter, Instagram? I forget. Did you do a YouTube? I, 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 I spoke to Jerome uh, earlier in the week. Welcome, Jerome. Welcome back, Jerome. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Matt, what's up, man? Hey, after Ian gets off, Matt, you may have your chance to win Maddie's job. So remember that. Uh, oh, sorry, Hario. Hi, Ro. Sorry. What's good, fam? These are all regulars. I'm loving this. I'm loving that you people are back. Hey, everybody, hit that like button. That's the way more people see us. That's the way the YouTube algorithms work. Don't disappoint me tonight. Don't disappoint me. Go down there and hit that thumbs up. Match game. Yes, it is the match game music. Very good. All right. Shouldn't you have used the win Ben Stein's money theme, which was uh, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony? Uh, you know what? I always love the match game music because it's so a time, right? So it's so 70s. Like the way it sounds like when you hear that, it literally sounds like 70s, almost 70s porn music. Oh, my goodness. I haven't even... I am so off tonight and and maybe that's because I don't have a co-host. I need one. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I didn't have the game going on behind me. So let's, let's put that game up there on the screen, ladies and gentlemen. And remember in the comments, unfortunately you can, oh God, I always leave it up where you can, can see what the game actually is, but this one shouldn't be hard. I, I actually, usually I'll go around like before the game and, uh, before the game starts and, uh, or before the show starts and I'll find like a, a, a game that people would know, but maybe they wouldn't, you know, a little, you know, I'll, fi I'd figure something out. And, uh, this time I was in a rush because I had, I was I, all day today. I was out in that rain doing stuff. My whole, my whole, the whole private road that I live off of is washed out. And it has like a, a, a God, it's gotta be like a one to two foot ditch in it. And the people who live on the private road, never, they barely ever come out to help. I, I, I can still get out of my driveway, but I still go out there and do that kind of thing. I still go out there and shovel that stuff. And today I'm sitting out there shoveling and shoveling and shoveling. And it, 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 the, the water's rushing so much. Every time I pull out a bunch of rocks and dirt, throw it to the side, boom, it just washes back in. So I gave up. I came in. I was food shopping. I was doing tons of stuff today. But ladies and gentlemen, a, a professional shows up on time. I really do appreciate that. Let's go. Two, Ian from Jet Central. How you doing, Ian? Mike? What's good, bro? How's it going, man? Thanks so much for having me, dude. It's an honor to have you. You know, I oh. actually, no, I actually, uh, we're go getting ready for this show. I said, oh man, you know, I've been I've been watching his videos for years now. I said, I think it's been since uh, when you put out your uh, uh, reaction video to Zach Wilson getting drafted, and okay. then I went back, I went back in your videos and I saw that video and I'm like. That's not the video because in the video I remember watching for the first time, he had a bunch of Jacksonville Jaguar stuff behind him. And then I realized it was when you watched Sam Darnold get drafted. So it's been five years. And how long have you had your channel? Pretty much for five years. There you go. 20, yeah. 2018 was like, that was the year where I really started like not getting into it, but just really started like, uh, I, I guess maybe like making upgrades and like, you know, buying a computer and stuff like that, as opposed to like just randomly just throwing, you know, me, you know, videos of just me talking on my phone vertically up. So, uh, yeah, no, it, it's been crazy. That Darnold videos, <laughs> that's insane. I, I freaking love Josh Rosen, man. I really did. I like, I, I do. I liked all of them. I, I, 
it, I mean, it's crazy to, you know, kind of look back on it, but I, I actually, I felt like Darnold was, he was just my least favorite option. He just kind of reminded me so much of Blake Bortles. Um, you know, the loopy release and whatnot. I like Lamar. I liked Allen. Uh, Baker was the one who I realistically thought that we were going to get though. I actually thought that or at, at that time also. Um, and, but, but what shocked me more was watching Zach Wilson get drafted and watching your video of that. I actually watched it. I think it was like two nights ago and you're, you're you and the guys around you, you seemed genuinely excited as was I. And so when I watched the video, I was like, I remember that. I remember being excited for Zach Wilson. <laughs> yeah, it's uh I mean it's one of those things too where it's just like yeah, I mean like also I mean as you know like growing up at least for me like I, the Jets weren't picking in the top 5. It's not like we've been, you know, a team like uh, you know, I'm trying to think where we where we've had like, you know, multiple number 1 picks in the last like 20 years or anything like that. Like Cleveland has obviously had like you know, top five pick after top five pick. But I felt like in that, you know, in that era, I guess, like the dark, the, you know, started Darnold to the Zach Wilson, you know, it, you know, when, when we drafted him, it was just so exciting, right? Picking that high because you never know who you're going to land. You know, Herbert flipped LA, Allen flipped Buffalo. Uh, I mean, really Baker flipped Cleveland too, to a certain degree. So, you know, you, you always kind of, I mean, at least for me, I, I'm always, and like envious of whoever goes like number one overall, Andrew Luck with Indy, Cam Newton, Carolina. Like you can go out and land that like stud. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I'm, and, and I'm, we we could have had Trevor Lawrence, and obviously everyone knows what happened uh, in the, right. at the end of that season. But now looking back at it, um, would you rather be going into this season with Trevor Lawrence or with what we're going with? Dude, that's a freaking that's a great question, man. I would I would I would rather roll with with Lawrence, I think. Um yeah. I do feel like Lawrence up to this point is kind of un underperformed, but granted, you know, he you know was the number one overall pick, gets drafted to literally like the, the worst situation in football with Urban Meyer, who ends up getting fired a year later. Um, so they almost kind of had to do like a double rebuild, like back to back rebuilds, then you know, bringing in Doug Peterson. But that's a really Really good question. I, I think if look if Rogers was 32, 33, I'm taking a rod. But because it's Lawrence and he's what twenty, I don't know five, twenty six. I think I'm gonna be. I, I think I would take Trevor. I think, I think, no, I think I think I'd go with. I think I overall I'd rather have Trevor Lawrence because that gives you hope of ten years, you know, of of future football games. But once again, if 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 it's like we're in a win now situation and in a win now win this year situation, I think I'd rather have Aaron Rodgers. you know? Mm -hmm. So if we're just going for this year, you know, I, I want Aaron Rodgers, but you're, you're right. Overall, we should want Trevor Lawrence because we wouldn't have that one year window if we had Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, for sure. No, I feel you. I mean, where do you kind of stand with the whole Roger? Like how long do you realistically think Rodgers is going to play for? I think we have him at least two years. Okay. I mean, at, at least he says three or four. I don't know if he was doing the four more years thing as a joke to the RFK thing, but I, 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 I don't think he's ready to give it up. And I think realistically, and I'm, I know I'm probably going to get crap for this. I, I don't know. I, it's, I've been a Jets fan for 40 plus years. I really can't sit here and believe truthfully and lie to you or anyone else watching that I think the Jets are going to win the Super Bowl this coming season. So I I I would want I think my, I my goal this year would be the division. And that's a question I was going to ask you tonight. Realistically, if the Jets stay relatively healthy, do they win the AFC East this year? It's such a good question. I, I think New England has no chance. No. I, I still feel like Buffalo. I, I think Miami will probably take a step back. Um, but Buffalo, man, like some of their free agency moves are just flying under the radar. They're adding defensive linemen, uh, like to, you know, older veterans are bringing them in on cheap one year deals. Curtis Samuel, uh, you know, I, I still feel like Buffalo is, is right up at the top, um, unfortunately. But if the Jets were, I guess, maybe more well-rounded, because, I, I mean, I was actually talking about this in a video today. You know, if Mike Williams gets hurt, it, you know, we're looking at the current landscape of the roster, we're right back to square one. We're talking about Lazard, 
being wide receiver two and stuff like that. If Tyron Smith goes down, what's the option there? If Morgan Moses goes down, like now all of a Listen. sudden we're, we're you know relying on whoever Max Mitchell, Carter Warren. We're very we're a really top heavy football team. I think o, o- line, yes, and I, I think Joe will build depth to that. He has plenty of time now uh, mm-hmm. to build depth on that offensive line, but. I, I'm going to be honest, and I don't want to say this like because there's Zach truthers out there, and I'm not one of them. I supported Zach. You know, I wanted I, anyone who puts on that helmet, I'm supporting them. Um, but he just, God, he kicked me in the nuts so many times, and just looked so pathetic so many times that I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with Zach Wilson anymore. But I'm going to say, and and my audience, people who watch me know, I am an Alan Lazard truther in in the in the way that. I think that Alan Lazard will be, if he stays, I know they were going to try to trade him. If he stays on the team and Aaron Rodgers is healthy, I think Alan Lazard this season will be a legitimate wide receiver three for the New York Jets. He could get 500 yards. You have to remember when Zach and and, and Trevor Simeon and Tim Boyle were throwing him the ball, it, 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 you're, it, they're, all, they're having to reach out, run out in front of them. They're having to slow down and catch it behind them. They're having to go over their head, below to the turf, all these different things. When Aaron Rodgers is throwing the ball 80, 90% of the time, it's hitting you in the hands or in the numbers. And yes, Alan Lazard drops some of those. But I think with the chemistry with Aaron Rodgers, if Aaron Rodgers stays healthy, Alan Lazard will surprise everyone. And I'm not saying he'll be a wide receiver too. I'm not saying he's going to be a one. But I think he will be a very legitimate wide receiver three for this team. He will surprise people. And to what you said earlier, if Mike Williams goes down, tell me at the end of the season, they started to realize, oh, we can throw Brees the ball out of the backfield. Unbelievable. So now look at it like this. Without Mike Williams, Garrett Wilson, uh, Brees Hall out of the backfield. Let's say I'm right about Alan Lazard and he let's say he can get 500 yards this season. And then I think we have a really good tight end room who can catch the ball. I don't think our our hands are as dire and bad as people think. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, and also, too, like this is before the draft. So, you know, if the Jets mm-hmm. go out and add Bowers, you know, or more offensive line help, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, obviously more help would be on the way. But, Dude, I love that take, man. It's something that I literally have not heard one time this offseason. Uh, you know, I think there was a lot of expectations for Lazard coming in, obviously with Rodgers, but also with Hackett, too. You know, like him knowing that system and having just being a familiar face. Uh, and also, to the contract size, four years, 44 mil. Like, you don't just throw out a deal like that. Like, Mike Williams got one year up to 15. Yep. You know, and, and I think a lot of people would say, you know, it, like it's, it's a lot of people would say that Mike Williams is the better player, but man, especially in this day and age with the cap going up, whatever it was, 30 mil and Williams is getting less. I mean, Curtis Samuel got less, Uh, you know, Alan, what did Lazar get four years, 44? Yeah, he. I I think that was a lot. I, I mean, but all I'm asking out of him this season is to be a good wide receiver three. Yeah, like he's here. That's the point. Like he's, yeah. he's going to be a jet. Uh, of course, I'm going to be rooting for him. Right? I love the back at college. Funny enough, um, I actually had the chance to uh, to meet him um, and, and oh, interview awesome. him, and he was the nicest dude ever. Uh, super cool. Um, down to the Senior Bowl, and yeah, I'm going to be pulling for him. But I love that take, man. That's you're literally the only person uh, who I've heard you know say that. So, uh, yeah, dude, if it happens, man, if it <laughs> happens, you gotta uh, you gotta take that to the bank. Well, that's the thing I've been I've been I've been saying it on every show for the since the end of the season that I really think Alan Lazard is going to be a legit wide receiver three. And I've even predicted 500 yards. And I said, like, either either people are going to think I'm a genius or I'm just going to get pummeled uh, next season when he doesn't do well. So we'll see what happens. Um I do think our wide receiver, once again, Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball is so much different than everything we saw over the past two seasons, especially last season. So if he stays, it's all, it's all predicated on Aaron Rodgers being healthy. So that's another thing why in that first pick, if we're not trading up, uh, I still want to go offensive line. I just anything to protect Aaron Rodgers for me, because if he goes down, we're, we're screwed. Yeah, well, I I think we are in a better position than we were a year ago with Tyrod. 
Oh yeah. I think Tyrod definitely gives us a better chance to win. Uh, and I also feel like, you know, our starting uh, offensive line is better than our starting offensive line last year. Um, you know, from top to bottom, I, I do feel like we are in a better position in 2024 than 2023, but no, I'm with you. I, I think if, if, you know, Fashanu's there at 10, I would be really, really intrigued to just pull the trigger and, and make him a jet. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'll take him Fuaga. I'll take, I mean, if Joe Alt falls, I'll take any of them at this. I mean, yeah, I just, yeah. I just want protection. I want depth. I'll take back Tiari. I want McGovern back as depth. Um, I hear he's a good locker room guy, so I have no problem uh, having him back on a one-year deal. And I see what Joe's doing here. Like I'd love a lot of these guys like Tyron Smith and Mike Williams to be signing for at least two years. Cause like I said, I think Rogers will be here for two years uh, if he's healthy, but I see what he's doing. He he wants as much money saved as possible because he wants to sign everybody he can. So <laughs> right. if that if that's what it is, that's what it is. I want hey, I want everybody watching, please don't disappoint me. Hit that thumbs up button uh, so that when I get off here and I go back and check to make sure everything went off without a hitch in the show, uh, I see those thumbs up and I really do appreciate that. This is a new show. My uh, co-host Maddie. Actually, let me tell you about him. My co-host Maddie, he is the uh, one who always dubbed us this underground, like punk rock New York jet show because we're just lunchbox, you know, fans from you know back in the day. Like we, you know, we will used to be in the upper bowl of Giant Stadium. Maddie even went to Shea. Uh, I wasn't old enough when when they were in Shea, but uh, yeah, it, it's it is what it is. Help us get those thumbs up. Um, Ian. Okay, so the one thing I have to ask you is uh, how every time a, a, an alert goes off on my phone about something that happens with the New York Jets, how the hell do I go onto YouTube and you already have a video out? How does that happen? Dude, I, I just try to stay on top of it, man. It's, uh, I'll, I'll say this, the people that kind of know me like personally don't like it at all because I'm like having a split in the middle of lunch or having to walk out of work or do something. I'm like, oh, I got to film a video, do do something like that. But most of the time they understand and uh, they're cool with it. But, um, dude, I, I got to switch phone companies. I feel like so I'm on Boost right now. I'm on the cheap Boost, boost uh, Mobile. Boost mobile. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to hop on one of these bigger, bigger carriers, man, to get the videos up faster. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, man, I'm shocked when you do those. It's it's I, I can't believe how quick because for me, I mean, once again, I also edit all my like when I do a video, uh, you know, a shorter video. I always edit them down and things like that. And then, you know, waiting for them to upload to YouTube and stuff like that. And I'm like, how does he get these videos out so quick? I know, like, I know you're not sitting there and editing them, but still you have to record them and then you have to upload them to YouTube. And somehow you're always one of the first. So I thought you had some sort of, uh, you know, in there or whatever, but you're just going by as soon as you get a notification or something, you go out and you do it. Well, so I do do the editing, um, but not for breaking news. For the breaking news, I just say, screw it. I'm just rolling because yeah. um, I want to get it up. You know, like that's really like that was kind of the reason why I started the channel, um, you know, to connect with other Jets fans. I, I love, you know, talking about breaking news, whether it's the Jets or not. Obviously, definitely with the Jets, but, you know, any any you know trade signing and stuff like that like it, it fires me up right because i i do enjoy good football i i like to kind of see teams build so you know whenever there is news like that i, I like to just kind of oh you know just kind of dish up my thoughts real quick and try to get it up as fast as possible because i know there's a bunch of other fans that are you know kind of thinking the same way like oh because i i know for me like jets make a move right jets sign mike williams like that made my day oh yeah you know I and mean? so like I'm, i don't want to personally just sit around and you know, wait for it or like, oh, I'll film it tomorrow or stuff like that. Like I want to get it up ASAP. Yeah. 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 And I, I, I understand that I just, with, with my, you know, with my Clark, as I call it, my Clark Kent job and all the other things that, that with the kids and all that stuff. Um, I definitely knew going into uh, doing jets content that I wasn't going to be able to have a channel like that. My channel was born. Um, originally this was, I did a podcast and I did this channel and it was all eighties and nineties, like pop culture and horror and stuff like that. Uh, and then it kind of fell off and, and COVID messed it up because my, my co-hosts used to travel up to Connecticut from New Jersey or travel when I lived in Philly, they would tr travel down to Philly. Um, cause all my friends were where I grew up in New Jersey and I would sit there and I'm, I'm at home and I'm just bitching at like my wife and like my daughters about the jets. And one day my <laughs> wife, my wife was like, can you, why don't you just make your channel about the jets? And I was like, okay. 
let's figure this out. And you could see if you go back through my videos that it's all like 80s and 90s stuff, top fives, taste tests of, of like uh, Dunkaroos when they were re-released and all this other stuff. And then all of a sudden it's nothing but Jets videos. It just, the whole channel changed. Um, what, what was with, like, what made you, what was this thing that flipped in your mind when you were like, you know what? I've got to start putting this out on YouTube. Like that's what it, it's time. Uh, well, dude, first off, man, I got to check some of that stuff out. I love eighties and nineties stuff, music, movies, all that, all that stuff. So I'll definitely be taking a look back. Um, but I guess for me, so I, I guess maybe like the one, maybe like defining moment. So I was with this, uh, girl, so I was dating my ex at the time years and years ago. And I would, you know, same, same thing as you just talk about football, nonstop, whatever jets, this complain about them losing and everything. And she was just like, you know, have you ever thought about like writing a blog, um, you know, just about the team, just kind of talking about what you're telling me. And I'm like, no, nah, not really. Like I suck at spelling and I don't know, just writing is not my thing. And then I kind of thought about it and I'm like, you know what? YouTube would be pretty cool. And so I, like I typed in like New York Jets on YouTube and nothing popped up. Like there's nothing there. Um, and I wasn't a big sports radio guy growing up. Obviously, so I'm not from New York or New Jersey or anything. I grew up in Florida. Uh, still living here. Um, but uh, yeah, so none of my friends were Jets fans. They're all Dolphins fans. And uh, I'm like, damn, like I, I really wanted to uh, talk Jets football with somebody else, right? Another human yeah. being. And um, yeah, so she kind of planted the planted the seed. And then a couple of days later, I'm like, you know what? Like maybe maybe YouTube would be better because I prefer talking over writing. Yeah, me too. Uh, and so that, that's kind of how it started. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so basically um, what happened was, is uh, my co-host Maddie, he was the one who originally reached out to you on Twitter. Uh, and I didn't okay. even know he, he reached out to you and uh, he told me about it and whatever. And when we got off air, I looked at it and saw that you had responded. I was like, I can't believe he responded, you know, because right now, I mean, Jets content creators on, on Twitter, there's a bunch of them. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll address that in a second, but he, uh, he, he, you know, had written, wrote to you or tweeted at you. And so then I carried it on and, and wrote to you and said, you know, let, let, can you come on the show? And I was so thrilled when you said you would, you would swing on for a bit and, and talk to me. And it turns out that tonight is Maddie's wife's birthday <laughs> and he's a big fan of yours and he couldn't be on the show tonight. So I want to say what's up to Maddie, uh, and, uh, just t tell you that he's, he's also a big fan uh, of your content. For sure. But for sure. Now I, I don't want to, you know, invite myself or anything like that. But next week, if you know, if you guys want to do it again, I'm down. Oh, absolutely. If, if I, Matt, Maddie will be thrilled. Although I am doing a, a contest tonight to win Maddie's job. So who knows? Cause he, he, he gave up the show for his wife's birthday. And that's just my wife. I'd be like, sorry, honey, I got a show to do. But anyway, um, but the, yeah, there's so many Jets content creators out there. And when my wife had said that to me, like, why don't you just stop bitching at me about the Jets? Just go, go, go do it on the Internet. And I said to her, I, I said, yeah, you know, I could do that, whatever. My previous shows were always recorded and called. They had my old one of my old shows had Midnight in the title. That's how I be, kind of became Midnight Mike. Um, and we always recorded or if we went, everything was always late night. And I said, you know what? I, I may be giving up views. I may be giving up things to do this, but I don't want to step on other people's live shows because I watch Jake Asman and I watch Talking Jets with Green Bean and, and Matt and Ryan. And there's so many Jets content creators out there. And I said, you know what? Nobody's doing like the late night Conan thing where they come on at 10 o'clock or nine o'clock and go through the night. And I said, you know what? I'm Midnight, I'm midnight Mike. I might as well just do that. So that's what that's how why our show is. Your, that's why you're here. Uh, past nine o'clock on a Saturday night, by the way. Cool, man. Yeah, no, I love it. I think it's, uh, I think it's cool. I mean, I would, I really wouldn't like, I don't know. I think, uh, cause I've seen your stuff and you got, you got good takes and I like how you guys just do your thing. You're not just like copying other people and, you know, just c copy and paste that type of stuff. Like you guys are like, I don't know. You got like a cool thing going. I, I really like it. Yeah. We're just trying to like, if, 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 if another topic comes up, even if it's not football related, like we ended up talking about our favorite spice girl one time. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if something comes up, we'll talk about it for a few minutes and then we'll circle back around to the jets. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we try to do. Um, now we are coming up. I told you I'd only hold you for 20 minutes. We're coming up on that 20 minute mark. 
Um, but what I wanted to do is I usually, when I used to do my old show, I was saying this earlier, I used to interview, you know, people who starred in horror movies and I used to interview pro wrestlers. And I always had a thing at the end where I called it like the lightning round where I'm just going to give you two choices and I want you to give me your answer. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, here we go. The first ones, I'm going to do it as, as if you were on my old show. So the first three, so Mario or Sonic? Sonic. Coke or Pepsi? Tough one. I like them both. I would probably go OG Coke, but Diet Pepsi. There you go. Uh, Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers? I think the... I think Jason's cooler. I like Michael better, but I just don't understand. It seems like Michael's just like invincible, like with the amount of gunshots and the amount of movies. It just oh, yeah. kind of seems like he's just, you can't kill him like no matter what. And it just kind of, for me at least, it kills like the anticipation throughout the movies. Cause like no matter what, he's going to be coming back. Well, I feel like a lot of horror movies, when you get into the deeper sequels, it all ends up doing that. So like Jason and Freddie and Chucky and Michael Myers, they, they all end up eventually just being invincible and it's just a cut and paste kind of deal for the movie. Right, um, right. Okay. This, these ones are going to get, I feel like, a little harder, okay? These are Jets related and they're all in this, this same, the same hypothetical situation. It's Super Bowl Sunday. The Jets are in the Super Bowl. Who are you choosing to start? We'll start at quarterback. Vinny Testaverde. Oh, and by the way, it's at their best. So don't think, okay, the, uh, picture these players playing th at their top. At their, they're going to have the best, one of their best games of their career in the Super Bowl. Who do you got, Vinny Testaverde or Chad Pennington? It's tough because Vinny had the clutch gene. You know, like he could, you know, uh, he, he wouldn't get rattled by the fourth quarter, rattled mm -hmm. of the you know Super Bowl veteran you know when he was on the jets but pennington you kind of just felt like for me at least he's never going to screw up he's never going to put the ball in harm's way he's going to check it down he's going to get rid of it he's going to be on time and i think the super bowl gosh they both really matter i would probably go with Vinny. there you go he's like literally my favorite player of all time yeah i don't, same I don't, I don't know why it's like when he came on the team in in in, in 98 um I was just I, at that point, I was like 18 years old and I had been through the boomers and I had been through I, I, I loved Kenny as a kid. Like Kenny was one of my heroes. But when Vinny, something about him just gave me confidence uh, watching him play. And that season he went 12 and two. And then it was, I guess, 13 and three, including the playoffs. And I had never seen a quarterback do anything like that. And he's held that spot for me as my favorite player since then. All right, here we go. Who are you going to have uh, as your running back? Curtis Martin at his best or Brees Hall at his best? Oh, <laughs> I go Curtis. Okay, fair enough. Curtis, I, I, actually, yeah. I love Curtis and I'd probably go Curtis too. But when I think at his best, man, sometimes Brees, man, he's just, he's just amazing. We are lucky to have him. Oh, 100%. Yeah. All right. We're going a uh, wide receiver. Al okay. Toon. Or Garrett Wilson. See, Al Toon was before my time. I never got to see him play. Oh, you got to watch some of his stuff. You got to watch. Okay, how about, how about this? Like a handful of plays, but you know, as far as like watching games or like a long, like twenty minute highlight reel, I haven't really seen it. So how about I this? Like I don't really answer the question. I'll move Al Toon out of it, and I'll say Wayne Corbett or Garrett Wilson. I'm gonna go Corbett, man. Tough catches. He has the uh, chemistry with Vinny. I'm going Corbett. Well, you know what, you know what, Brees and Garrett have some time and they, they can, they can change our opinions. You know, mm. they, they have the time to change our opinions. All right, here we go. This is the final one. And this one's going to be fun. And I want people down in the comments section, uh, later on, I'll get to it and I'll know what you're talking about. Uh, here we go. It's the Super Bowl. Vinny and, and Pennington aren't available. So at their best, the best game you've ever seen them play, who are you taking in the Super Bowl at quarterback? Zach Wilson. Or Sam Darnold? Oh, man. This is a really good question. Um, <laughs> At their best. So we're talking like Zach Wilson Chiefs game, maybe Texans second half. You know, I'm trying to I'm trying to at least be fair because I mean, Sam, I think, has a better resume, but maybe not as many shockingly spectacular moments as Zach. 
I don't know. Zach would have the plays that were insane, like yeah. the scr- the uh, the scramble, or um, you know, like when I think of like when I think about Zach Wilson, I, the first play I think about is the the play action rollout against the Titans, his rookie year, where he just free where he hooked it deep to I believe it was Corey Davis, man in the Super Bowl. Gosh, I think. Uh, but then when I think of Darnold, I think of like that game against Houston and Green Bay, yep. his rookie year. I think if they're at their best, I probably I probably go Darnold. Okay, okay. I honestly thought about it for a while. And I'm, I, I was just thinking about it. And you know what? Like if Zach Wilson could play 17 games, like he played against the chiefs and the Texans, he'd be an out, like a, a amazing quarterback. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I was, and, and you know what? It might be because for the past five years, ever since these, these, these ugly uniforms have showed up. Um, I think yeah. I just, I think I just have this veil of just misery and, and, and black over Like, I can't, I can't see anything. I have a hard time remembering, um, but yeah, I look, it's your choice. You're taking Sam Darnold and who can blame you? Uh, because Sam Darnold clearly, I think he has more wins than Zach, right? He's yeah, got, I think over, and at least more experience too. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Ian, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And if you are willing, I'll, I'll reach out to you. If you can't, maybe the week after that, I want, I would love you to come on and talk to Maddie because I know he probably had some questions for you and he was the one who originally uh, reached out and I really appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, dude, hundred percent. Actually real quick before I head out, I think honestly, I might change my answer because the one thing, dude, you're talking about the Super Bowl. The mm-hmm. one thing about Darnold he would always crumble in like the big time games, like the prime time games, uh, like the divisional games against New England and stuff. He would just fall apart completely. Whereas with Wilson, it kind of seemed like that was where, like at least in that Chiefs game, like that was a huge, you know, prime time game. He, Wilson beat the Eagles. Yep. You know, this past season. Well, and he um, and the Bills game when he had to come in with Rodgers down. Like I said last yeah, week, yep, when, yep. when when Rodgers went down. I never, when Vinny went down, I felt pretty sick, but it's so long ago that I I can't really compare. But when Rodgers went down and they went over to that shot on the sideline of Zach Wilson putting his helmet on, I felt just literally sick. (laughs) I think I watched the rest of the game just muted. I was just sitting there like, damn. Yeah. It was, it was literally, I have a pair. Let me real quick, real quick. let, Let me just pull this up. I have a picture right here and this was the that night this is me and my daughters getting ready to watch the game versus the bills okay and they had to go to bed so they weren't going to be able to um actually sit and watch the the whole game so right as the game was starting this was right before and then we're all in our roger shirts we're all excited i'm super excited explaining to them what's about to happen and then what happens is, is my wife calls them from upstairs and says, girls, it's time to brush your teeth. And when you're done brushing your teeth, you can go back downstairs and you can, you know, you have to get ready for bed. And, and then you can watch a little bit of the game with your dad before bed. Before they could come back downstairs, I walked upstairs and went to my wife. I said, it's over. Like, that's the end. They don't have to come back down. Rogers went down. My wife's like, you're kidding, right? I'm like, no, it's done. It's over. And it was, uh, I just felt so sick. <laughs> like, it's just looking back at it. Yeah. But, that whole, uh, I mean, what's crazy is we won the game, you know, yeah. Zach, like held it down. We had, yep. you know, Gibson at the end, which is nuts, but it definitely kind of felt, uh, yeah. T- tough pill to swallow, which, you know, kind of builds off your point from before, you know, get, get Rogers more protection. Yep. I, as hey. They go, I hope they go. They have four deep at every person on the offensive line. I don't care if they, I don't care if we don't, we can go without, uh, we can go without safeties this year. I don't care. Just figure out something, get as many people on that offensive line as we possibly can to, 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 to block for Aaron Rodgers. But once again, I am so thankful that you came on. Uh, I've been, like I said, I thought it was three years, but I've been watching you for five years. Uh, all those updates, all those things. And, and, and I want to promote what you have going. It's Jet Central on YouTube. But I saw for a while there you did have a like a live show. Are you still um, do you still do that? So I do some streams with Bleacher Report. Um, 
but that's pretty so i do i do the podcast with tyson from let's talk jets radio which is really cool um that's kind of just you know hour of talking jets football uh i've been going live more as of late because i finally moved um in my own spot now so yeah it's uh hopefully i'll I'll be doing some more live stuff soon terrific and and Hey, if you can come on next week, I'll I'll reach out to you like Friday or something and see if you're available. And if you are, come on and say hi to Maddie. Awesome, man. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks so much for having me, bro. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Ian from Jet Central comes on the show, and, and that's awesome. I mean, let's be honest. And you know what? Why not give him the Jets chant on his way out? Jets, Jets, Jets. All right, now we have to get to your guys' comments, and I did. I wanted to be able to talk to Ian. I'm sorry if, if, he, if he's willing to come back on next time. I will 100% go to your comments and let him answer some of your comments uh, because once again, there was questions and things that I wanted to ask him uh, about the AFC East, about his the videos and how quickly he gets them out and things like that. We had a great conversation, but uh, next week or the week after, whatever, whenever we can get him back on. I'll go to comments because, you know, Maddie will have maybe have a question or two and then I'll get to you guys. And I got tons of comments here. I am very excited about that. So let me get through some of these comments. Hold on. Let's go back up to the top. All right. Let's see here. All right. Let's see. Infrared says, Maddie, happy birthday. to Get the get out of here. He is. He is a traitor. A traitor to the Jets, a traitor to this show, and we need to win Maddie's job. That's what we're doing here, ladies and gentlemen. And Hyro says trade Ruckert or uh, Reed for a second rounder. Uh, I don't know about that. That's something I'm going to actually have to think about. Guys, by the way, if you like that interview, uh, if you liked having uh, uh, Ian come on from from Jet Central, hit those thumbs up. I would love to go outside tonight and be like, holy crap, look at what he, I did without that jerk off Maddie, you know, going off, hanging out with his wife. Remember, folks, remember this. You can come on the show tonight and do what? And do what? Win Maddie's job! And our first contestant is here, and he's actually a co-host of mine on the Undroppables Network uh, on on, uh, Jets Uncovered. Coming on to try to win Maddie's job, let's bring on Honest Abe. They want me. Yes, they like me. They really like really? me. <laughs> What's up, man? How you doing? Oh, Mike, I am so freaking tired. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, bro. Oh, yeah? I had the, uh, the That's good old... That's okay, man. I only, I only need you for... Like, yeah, no, I only need you for like three and a half hours, so we're good. Cool. Let's let's go. <laughs> Nothing like staying up all night after being up. Like, real talk. I've been up since 4.30 this morning. And I have a my alarm set to go off at 5 a.m. tomorrow to head to the west side, west side of this wonderful state that I live in. That was um, a hell of an interview. Did you see? Did you see? Oh, did you like it? Yeah, yeah. I, I got I caught the uh I'd say mid to end of it. Oakland University basketball game was on. That was went into overtime. That game was electric. Uh shout out to them. Shout out to my guy Neil Rule, who's a he who's a golden grizzly through and through. So that that was a that's a tough loss to take, but hey, you beat Kentucky in the first round. I mean, mad props to Oakland University. Shout out, shout out to the local team. I am so far. I see. Here's the thing. I wanted to like give Ian his due, I, and I said this. I didn't want to like have to, but now I am so far behind in comments that I don't know what to do. I've never had a show where I go so I have to go so far back with all these comments infrared in there what's up to everybody in the house oh and i wanted to if, if i go off of this damn it if i go off of this i wanted to what what did you think of the new of the logo i sent you oh i loved it absolutely okay. absolute fire that's a good thing because i wanted to actually show uh people and i wanted to show you because you said that you liked um 
So I, I made this logo quickly for Jets Uncovered because right now we were just going with like when you go on all your major podcast platforms, search The Undroppables and you find the Jet Show. It's the picture of Aaron Rodgers. So I, I wanted something like some of the other ones, other shows had, and I and I came up with this, and I hope people like that. Dude, that's so good. You know, um, my talents are so minimal when it comes to that kind of stuff. I literally Googled Aaron Rodgers Jets jersey, and that was even before he was he actually suited up. As you can tell, it's not even the jersey that he wore in the one second of play that he had. So it's all it's, it was all uh, wonderful Google imaging that my talents took me to. Well, if we, if we ever want to sell merchandise, I might need to tweak it a bit because that logo is kind of uh, not ours, uh, that main one. But go up to look at the look at the top of the screen. Oh, look how cool cool. That looks that's so good. That looks cool, right? That's so good. And it didn't and it didn't look good I mean, when you just kind of look at it. It kind of looks like a penis a little bit, but besides oh, that, it. it looks like a fighter jet. Get your head, get your head out of the garbage. That looks oh. awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it up there while you're on. All right. Uh, other hand, <laughs> just, I'm just gonna hold it up the whole night. I apologize for my lighting. So you can see I got this one light behind me. Uh, while I, I was getting some work done in the house, and my electrician comes down to my studio down here, and he's uh, I had some issues with the lights. He looks at it and he goes, "You know, you're lucky. Every time you turn that thing on, the whole house didn't set on fire. All the wiring is so bad down here." So I was like, well, that's excellent. So Dude, my that's basement, scary. Yeah, I know. That's so my basement is completely scary. dark for a month, for like two weeks now. So I just threw, threw this little lamp down here and uh, ho hopefully it works enough. So I'm going to, I'm going to, while you're here and what's up, Lisa, I appreciate you being here. Guys, hit those like buttons. Valerie, the first lady of the Midnight Mike show. Thank you for being here. Uh, infrared comes back. <laughs> said, no, no, Jets, Jets, Jets. Jets. Um, Matt's 2010 wild card game between the Jets and the Bengals. Oh, you're close. You're close, Mets. And I see you in the green room. I will be getting to you soon. Oh, one of our other girls, Monique, is here. Mike, let's go. Hey, let's go. I'm happy to have you girls here. It's amazing that we get you female Jets fans in here watching us. I am humbled. Humbled. I hope you guys liked the interview. Lisa, hi, Ian. And once again, he will probably see this back and, and hopefully he'll be on next week. And uh, I watch Ian. Yeah, we all watch Ian, and that's why I knew he'd be a great guest for the show. Uh, okay, Abe, did you hear some of the questions I asked him? Uh, yes, I was listening. I was listening to that part for sure, especially your, your rapid fire at the end. It's very impressive. That's, that's what I'm going to ask you now. Let's go. Hell yeah. Mario or Sonic? Mario all day, every day of the week, twice on Sunday. No questions asked. I would say Mario too. And it's just because I like Sonic, but I just, I just, as a kid, I always had Nintendo and I'd play Genesis at my friend's house. And now I have like the super Nintendo emulator and my friend put Genesis games on it. So now I play them all the same, but I we definitely grew up. We play super Mario brothers and Mario Kart in this house almost religiously. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I can't get enough. I mean, I, I love all the Mar original NES Mario games, but Mario three, man, I played that out. Uh, I yeah. played that out. Yeah. Uh, if I got you, my real name is Eric. The Ed is from my nickname, Infrared. Uh, wow, I didn't know that. That's good. All right, yeah, Coke or Pepsi? Oh, Red Label Coke, all day, every day, no questions asked. That is the number one of all sodas. And anyone out there that calls it anything but soda, they call it, especially where I come from, they call it pop. Pisses me oh. off. That is that is soda. That is yeah, but luckily we're here. Luckily, our team here is on the East Coast, so yeah, most oh. people call it soda, or you know, they call it by the brand name. So it's, it's give me a Dr Pepper, give me a Coke, give me a Sprite, give me a Seven Up, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, the pop thing, I never understood. It, it sounds just a little childish. But once again, I can't judge because I have family out in like Missouri, and I have family down in Florida and and all those places. Guys, I see you all watching. I'm getting through these comments. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe down below. And also, I'm going to be gifting five memberships to my channel. So I need you guys go down below. You hit in the next to the comments, there's that money symbol. You hit the money symbol, and then it says memberships. Hit memberships, and then it'll say allow gifted memberships. Click that. And when I gift the five memberships, it will go out to five of you guys. And I'll actually, it will tell me, I believe, who, who were, was gifted the membership. So I hope some of you guys, like who are here all the time, uh, uh, get these. Uh, all right, Abe, here we go. Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers. 
Voorhees, no question. I would say, and I didn't talk when when I was on with Ian. I didn't actually say this. I I for me, it's so hard to choose between the two because Jason, and you can see behind me, I got Jason and Michael. Um, I can't believe I got those points right. It's so hard to point when you're watching yourself on camera, but somehow I pulled that one off. Holding the uh, yes, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it's it's it, it, I it's Jason. You want you get you know you're gonna get tons of tits. You know you're get get tons of overly gratuitous <laughs> like, bloody killing. But with Michael, you're gonna get a few movies that are actually like artistic and are are suspenseful, and it doesn't need the blood because the suspense carries the film. So it's like that one for me is almost a deadlock tie, and it's hard for me to even choose. So it makes um, a great question. So now, uh, now we're going to go into those uh, Jets questions uh, that I was talking to Ian about. So, Abe, it's the Super Bowl. The Jets are in the Super Bowl. And these players are going to play at their best, okay? They're going to play at their best. So don't think about the crap. Who are you taking at quarterback? Vinny Testaverde and Chad, or Chad Pennington, and tell me why. So when you first asked this question to Ian, I, I, I was thinking about it. And it took me back to to ways away, back to the good old days, uh, when you and I recorded our Mount Rushmore episode. And when I was thinking about good that, episode. I said, great episode. And by the way, if you haven't if you haven't listened to it, it's not a, you know, especially in the off season now, the show, the podcast shows that we do, not everything is so super time sensitive. Go back and listen to that Mount Rushmore show. It's it's one of the I, I mean, no bias, of course. It's one of the greatest New York Jets podcasts in the history of New York Jets podcasts. <laughs> but no, no bragging, no bias. Yeah, no bragging. No bias. And and we had we were talking on the phone on fr Thursday or Friday, and we have some good ideas for coming up on the off season. Like we're I'm gonna have some fun. Excited. I'm very very excited. It's a hell. It's gonna be so much fun. Uh, I, I Vinny's your guy. I I know it, Vinny. The number sixteen is tattooed on the back of, of your back. I, I'm well I'm well aware. I love I mean, Vinny. To me, Chad Chad was my guy, though. Chad was my was always my guy. So I want I want that number 10 out there throwing those five yard slants and check downs to Curtis Martin all day. Give me that. Now, before we get on to the next question, I want to point something out to everybody at home. Um, yeah, we're trying, we're trying to see if Abe or, or, or Mets will be coming in soon. Uh, if you guys want, go down into the comments section uh and and find I think one of the first it's somewhere in there, and, and you can join the show and you can win Maddie's job. And now I think I remember I, I said I think Matt, Matt Maddie's really nervous. He's trying to get home right now because he's telling his wife, he's like, I gotta get on that show. My job's on the line. I was just delivered. This is from Maddie. And that's no K or complete kayfabe. Like this is serious. Maddie sent me a, a couple weeks ago. I said that the only the only Wayne Corbett jersey that I had was um, like a replica jersey that I got way back in the day, and I, I bought it you know way too big for myself, and it was all faded now from twenty something years of washing. This is no bullshit, folks. Maddie sent me an authentic Wayne Corbett yeah. Reebok. Reebok, which is what they were wearing at the time. They wore starter, then Reebok uh, jersey. And I want to thank him because seriously, uh, that is that is really awesome. And I, I can't, I can't, you know, I, it's sucking up, Abe, is what it is. I get it. I get it. He's, he's trying to keep his job is what he's doing. I, I mean, can you, can you blame the guy? No, not at all. Uh, real quick, back to the comments before I ask you the next question. Uh, Oh, okay. So, so earlier infrared said that a rod will be here three years. He loves football too much. Brady left at 45. And I always say this and other people say this too, from your lips to God's ears, I would love a Aaron Rodgers for, uh, for three years. And that's why Hyro then said, agree when Aaron Rodgers retired, he'll be our next governor. Let's, can we just keep the, can we just keep Aaron Rodgers and politics out of it till he's retired? Just leave it at that. Uh, Abe, who are you having in the Super Bowl at their best at running back, Curtis Martin or Brees Hall? So again, an, another super tough question, but I agree with Ian, and I'm going with a guy that I know right now is already a Hall of Famer, where Brees Hall it, it has been great for sure, 100%. But if you're going to give me the option between a guy who looks really good versus a guy that already has that gold jacket, and a lot of that with the Jets, how do you how do you not 
how do you not take Curtis Martin there? Yeah, I agree. And, and I said to Ian, with guys like Brees and Garrett, they, they have time to prove us wrong or to pad their resume. So I just want to let everybody know I did just drop another link in the comments if you want to win Maddie's job uh, it, so you can uh, come into the green room. I will be bringing as soon as I'm done asking Abe these questions, I'm going to bring Mets in. Abe can stick around as long as he wants, but then we're going to we're going to ask uh, 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 Mets some of these questions. And I don't know. Really... Mets is a Giants fan. So we, we may have to ask him, you know, like Phil <laughs> Simpson. You know, yeah, we may need to ask him Phil Sims or Eli Manning. You know, we may not be able to. Is he going to know? He, he's actually, he knows I could see him in the green room. <laughs> he's making like finger gestures. I don't know if it's the middle finger or not. We'll find out. Uh, okay, here we go, Abe. The next one. Are you too young? Because because uh, uh, yeah. Ian from Jet oh, Central yeah. was. Yeah, oh, yeah, originally it was Al Toon or Garrett Wilson. But I think I know the answer when I say Wayne Corbett or Garrett Wilson. So here's the thing. I actually think the, the question's wrong because I know you I know you came up with it on on the spot. Garrett Wilson is, in my belief, way more talented than Wayne Corbett. We all love Wayne Corbett. We love the grittiness, the, the Hofstra yeah. stuff. We love all that. But just talent wise, Garrett Wilson is worlds above Wayne Corbett. I actually think the more interesting question, and Michael, I'll pose this to you now. All right, Garrett Wilson or Keyshawn Johnson. Ooh, because talent wise, when Keyshawn was a jet, I mean, dude was dude was a top three receiver in the league. He was, he was. Um, oh, that's a tough one. And here's I don't and I will I'll say they're deadlocked, but I will give you an answer. Because the earlier question was Testaverde or Pennington, and I'd easily go Testaverde. Testaverde and Keyshawn have the chemistry, so we're gonna go with Keyshawn over Garrett Wilson. But once again. Garrett has plenty of years left in him to pad that resume. Right. And look, when it comes down to something so, so tight like that, you look for the small little nitpicky stuff, right? Like mm -hmm. because he, th because Vinny threw to him, that's who I'm going to take. It's the, yeah. it's the small stuff like that. And that's why I think the Keyshawn versus Garrett is a more interesting question than Wayne Corbett versus Garrett, because the talents talent talents, not, not questionable that it's Garrett Wilson all day, but who do you love more as a jet? It's Wayne Corbett because, the Jets won with Wayne Corbett. You know, he did all those great things for the organization. He's only a Jet. Gary Wilson's two years in. So there's a whole career left ahead for him to see what kind of Jet long term he's going to be. Absolutely. And, 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 and Garrett Wilson will definitely hold a uh, much higher esteem to me as a New York Jet if he doesn't bail for the Bucks like Keyshawn did. So. Right. That that's also another thing. Um, Monique says, "Welcome, Ian. What do you think about uh, OBJ as a slot receiver?" While hey, listen, Monique, I, I my plan was, like I said earlier, to talk to Ian uh, with just me and him have a conversation, and we did that. But shockingly, he was like, "Hey, I'll come on next week, you know, and I'll talk to you and Maddie." So please, I know you'll be here next week, Monique. We love you. Hold that question, and when Ian comes on again next week, uh pose it to him because i will be going through the comments with him lazard is afraid to get hit that is my problem with him hey i'm a lazard truther you are i am like you are the absolute alan lazard like i'm i'm shocked maddie didn't send you a lazard jersey instead well i don't want anyone to send me any jerseys until the legacy jerseys are, are come back out because i have two i have i have two of their ugly ass i don't even know what to call them like what are we gonna when history calls these jerseys something what are we going to call these jerseys like the loser jerseys these are, like, wh these are what are this is the gays dynasty jerseys the gays dynasty jerseys yeah because okay if that's what we want to call them that's fine yeah they but look like I, crap. he is crap it all works together so I have I have two of those. I have a Sam Darnold 14 and I have a, a, an Aaron Rodgers that was gifted to me by a, a family member. Um, as we all know, I am burning the number 14 in effigy to try to reverse the curse of these jerseys uh, before the legacy jerseys come out. Uh, I will put that out on my YouTube channel, but I don't want any more of these ugly jerseys. So if anyone ever wants to send me a jersey, uh, even as a joke, you want to send me an Alan Lazard jersey, whatever, let's just wait till the legacy jerseys, the new legacy jerseys come out and uh, we'll go with those. Um, I'm going to continue to rip through some of these comments because I am so far behind. Uh, he definitely is actually a few of them around there. They got, oh, I, see, I, 
I love that you guys are having you're, you're conversation. Having conversation, you have no idea what's going on anymore. No, but I like I do like the fact that people can ha have conversations with each other, like the the, uh, the friends and and listeners of of this show can also have their own conversations, and and that's awesome. Uh, okay, Abe, we have the final one, and I think this one was the shocker, the one that people didn't expect because I was going with all the greats, you know, all great players. It's the Super Bowl. They're at their best. Who's at quarterback for the New York Jets if you're the coach or the general manager? Zach Wilson or Sam Darnold? So this one isn't close to me. No? It's it's not close. It's Zach Wilson by miles. Zach Wilson, to me, I look, between the ears is Zach Wilson's problem. His physical talent we've seen on the field against the one half against the Texans, uh, against Kansas City in the second half, uh, we saw it, you know, par partly in his rookie season. Zach Wilson has physical talent to be a quarterback in the NFL. He, the problem with Zach Wilson is that he's not a guy that teams can build around. He's not a guy that that we talk about how Aaron Rodgers is really going to be the OC with Nathaniel Hackett. Zach Wilson isn't that guy, right? So no, no. Zach Wilson has all this talent. He just needs to be coached up correctly, have the right guys around him, the right pieces around him. Sam Darnold, to me, there's nothing in his game that's exciting. There's nothing in his game that goes, man, he can just take over. Where Zach Wilson, when he gave the, the effort mentality, the dude was slinging it. I, I can't remember one moment in Sam Darnold's career outside of a, a broken 50-yard touchdown run that I remember Sam Darnold having a great moment. Ian mentioned the the touchdown pass to Corey Davis in his rookie season. That was a great Zach Wilson moment. Uh, we have we have the the Alan Lazard touchdown pass against Kansas City. That's a great Zach Wilson moment. We we have these we have these small glimpses that Zach Wilson actually showed he can play competent level quarterbacking in the NFL. Can you see this? Is that a is that a deadline? There's, there's a line down the middle, and at the top it says a hundred. And at the bottom, it says zero, okay? So this is why I agree with you. I think that... You see that line, you see that line below the middle line? Yep. That's, that's Sam Darnold uh, throughout his career with the Jets, right? Yep. You see that line? Yep. That's Zach Wilson. So he in in little little tiny spurts, he does great. But the rest of the time, he's way worse than Sam Darnold. But like you noticed, and I think that Ian noticed later on, I said at their best. So we're looking up here. Give me that. Give me that. I don't trust Sam Darnold for crap. He was he was a poor man's Mark Sanchez. And Mark was great. By the way, if Red, you better not be talking about me in that comment. That better not be me. Although I that feel was, like it uh, is because it's the laughing face. The uh, uh, Pence, I believe. Pence. Mike Pence is who he's talking about. Oh, maybe, about. yeah. Maybe he's talking about Mike Pence. Yeah, that guy's like a stone wall. You can't even read him. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I agree with you. It, 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 deep down, I'd probably at his, be at his best go with, go with Zach Wilson because we're not talking about average their average if we're talking about their average i'm going sam darnold sam darnold had no ceiling he only has a floor there there what's a what's a great sam darnold game 14 for 21 for for 186 yards uh, a touchdown and two picks that's a great sam darnold game where a yeah. great Zach yeah. wilson game is 18 for 38 uh for 290 two touchdowns and a pick yeah, yeah. absolutely so let me ask yeah, you I let me hold ask on, you real quick. Hold on. Sharp right. instinct says, and the reason I mentioned him is because I don't, I don't know. I maybe we've seen him once in here, but uh, I wanted to get this. Garrett does not have the body to catch a hundred passes. That's why Williams was a great ad. Uh, I disagree with that, but, but I see what you're saying. So I see what you're saying. And Williams, I think Williams is a great ad, but go ahead. Uh, Abe. So with all your random ass questions, I, I had one for you as well. On Jets related football related. You are putting on the pads. You have two options of which you have to do. One is play linebacker and try to tackle Derrick Henry in his prime. Okay. Or, option, or option two 
is to line up at right guard and block Aaron Donald in his prime. Ooh, I don't know. This is like kind of like one of those questions like, would you fight Mike Tyson for $50 million? Right. No, you're going to die either way. Yeah, knowing you're going to get destroyed. Okay, give me give me it again. I'm either going to be blocking. Block Aaron Donald or tackle Derrick Henry. Tackle Derrick Henry. See, Tackle I'm, Derrick Henry. I'm because a, at least with that one, it's like I'm going at him and I, my force is going forward. Whereas if I'm, if I'm blocking, I'm kind of backing up and just getting run over. So here's always my thoughts. <laughs> If I'm playing linebacker against Derrick Henry, yes, you're you're moving forward. Uh, so is he with a five yard head of steam. He's going to take your head clean off. Where my belief is with Aaron Donald, if I'm if I'm in a three point stance against him, we're basically nose to nose. It, it'll be one one quick slap and I'm gone, and then it won't be it won't be as much force and momentum ending my life. Okay, I mean I I, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, it, that's, that's a tough one. Ooh, I'd like more questions like that. Like uh, if you're on the field, I liked that. Like if you're on the field, like who would you, who would you rather get sacked by if you're the quarterback, you know, like things like to, that. Are you going to catch a pass against the Rel Revis or are you going to stop Calvin Johnson from catching a pass? I don't think I'd be able to do either. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Which, one is, do? Which one's going to make you look less, less embarrassing. Garrett's elect el elasticity is unmatched in the NFL. He's like a rubber band on the field. Got a thousand yards in back to back seasons with over five quarterbacks. Uh, he's a gem. Yeah. Garrett Wilson putting up the numbers that he's put up over the last two years with Wilson and Strevler and Boyle and Simeon and these guys throwing him the ball. He's incredible. Like no one can take away what Garrett Wilson is. By the way, be ready, Mets. I'm about to bring you in. I'm just letting you know. Be ready. Uh, and also, folks, please go down and hit that money symbol next to the comment sections. You want to accept gifted memberships because I am about to. This is your last warning. I'm about to officially gift those five memberships to the channel. Will you'll be able to watch the replays of the Tuesday night show? You'll still be able to watch Tuesday night live. Uh, but then the next day I will be putting it behind on the on the membership page. And then I am going to start coming out with uh, membership only live streams uh, or videos. Uh, like I said, I wanted to talk about the Shohei Otani thing. Uh, I don't know if you know yeah, all about that. I'm a huge, as much as I love the Jets, I'm a huge Mets fan. I'm a huge, ba like baseball was my first love in life. I love, I love the game. Me and my son do a New York Mets podcast, which Mike, I love, I love doing podcasts with you, but there is nothing greater than doing a podcast with your with your child my, my son's 12 years old we do a new york mets podcast and it's i, I get such uh like such joy seeing him talk about it say with the same passion i had when i when i was that age no i completely agree and one day like my my daughter alice she's only seven now but she has that thing where she she i, I we still don't allow her to have a phone or anything like that but she makes fake phones out of like cardboard and she'll walk around the house talking to it and like, like she has followers and she'll be like, dad, how many followers do you have? Or how many subscribers do you have? And she'll be like, I have 8,000. And, you know, and so I think one day we're going to be seeing her sitting next to me doing something. Um, and then obviously I'll let her go on from there. Uh, but guys hit those thumbs up while you're out there too. When I get off this video, I want to be, <laughs> proud, of, I want to be proud of all of you. Uh, and just as much as uh, I'm proud of myself for getting through this show without that piece of shit maddie who found his wife's birthday to be more important than the show so once again we are playing win maddie's job and our next contestant is coming in ladies and gentlemen meet contestant number two he complains about everything he hates the knicks he hates the jets he hates the giants he hates pro wrestling he will complain about it it's Mets. He's lying about most of that crap, folks. Well, I, when I say hate, it's like how I hate the Jets. Oh. It's 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 like you just get so pissed and you just start yelling and getting all angry, and that's like that's like your gimmick. So I like that. Anyway, wait. I'm doing okay tonight, and there we go. I'm gonna be back in the workforce starting Tuesday. Oh, there, there you go. You do. Do you want to say what you're doing or do you not want to say it? Um, 
outdoor lawn garden department customer service sales and lows nice nice will you get to be in one of those like you know there's like you know at the lowe's or home depot you have the indoor area but then you have that nice outdoor area that smells like fertilizer that's like a greenhouse or spot do yeah the, i'd rather be there do they still sell hot dogs outside of home depot because i remember as a kid like that was the I'm best at Lo at lowe's oh i go to lowe's hey, i'm at lowe's every day um Real quick, I want to say that Jer Jerome, hold on, Jerome said earlier that he has been a fan of the New York Jets since 1965, and he is the first person out of all my guests, out of anyone in the comments, when I mentioned Al Toon, to say, Toon, and that's what you used to yell at Giants Stadium, so I'm glad he remembered that. I love you, Jerome. Go ahead, Mets. Hey, the, I think some of them still do, but the one I'm working at has a bit of a, has a, Food trailer that sells tacos. Uh, oh, that works. Sold. So yeah, I'll absolutely. be there. I go to Lowe's every single day. I'll be there in the morning. All right. Let me, let me, let Mets, now that you're in here, let me, I'm going to start with the first few questions just because I know you're a Giants fan. You're not a, not a Jets fan. I like the Jets. <laughs> I, like the Jets. I know, but I always have to give you a hard, that, that is the future of this show is to give you a hard time for telling us that you are originally a Giants fan. Um, so I need to know, Mario or Sonic? Mario. Can you say it correctly, yeah. Mike? Mike, it, it, it's, it's, start, it's starting to get to me. It's not Mario. It's Mario. Um, actually, you know what? When I moved, I moved up to when I moved up to Connecticut uh, a couple years back, um, they they always hit me on like what if I if I say Mario or if I say um, um if I talk about water, they always people up in Connecticut give me so much shit and I don't hear it. So what are you you're saying? I'm oh, saying Mario. 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 You're not saying it. You're saying Mario. I'm saying Mario. Yeah. Like, That's, like, it's, like, dude, like I, I, I go, there's a pizza spot over here called Mario's, but it's not Mario. It's, it's yeah, Mario. It's, yeah, it's, but it's Mario. It's a, it's a harder it. It's Mario. See, look, I grew up in Jersey. I grew up where the Sopranos grew up. And I have, I had a, three, three people, one friend named Mario and everyone called them Mario. And I don't want to say their last name, but it's super Italian. As a matter of fact, yes. um, I mean, yes. they're, they're your friends were named Mario, Mario and Luigi Mario. No, no, no. Okay. I'm just going to say the names because the, 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 I'm not going to say first and last names or whatever. I'm my, just going to say, going, am I investigating these guys already? No, I'm just going to say these names just so you understand where I grew up in yeah. New Jersey. The people that were my some of my best friends or some of my classmates in school or things of that nature, acquaintances, whatever, they were uh, a, a Biondio, a Fornini, Rosamilia, uh, Fido. Um, and I could literally, it's just go through this list. I grew up in Italian New Jersey. And if they tell me it's Mario, it's Mario. Okay. Right. So I'm going to trust them. Uh, Hiro said, thanks, Ian. And I, once again, yes, thank you, Ian, for being on the show. I appreciate you being here. And he's going to come back. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Guys, hit those thumbs up button. And 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 nice. remember, try to make it so you can be gifted memberships because I am about to do that. Um, Mets, Coke or Pepsi? I'm more of a Pepsi guy, but I'm getting disappointed that with most sporting venues, Pepsi is dying out. Is it? I mean, you look at baseball, more than two, close to two thirds of the teams are now serving Coke products. And the only teams that are serving Pepsi products, at least in baseball, off the top of my head, Arizona, San Diego, the Yankees, um, Milwaukee. I know in, De in Detroit, they sell Pepsi. Detroit, the, the Brewers, the Tigers, the Marlins, uh, the Royals. You want to hear something crazy? I, I I think Coke is way better. Coca Cola Classic is my favorite soda or or cherry Coke, whatever. A million miles. But I would rather have if I had to had a, a thing. Why I'd rather have Pe Pepsi RPM. products. So I don't like Pepsi more, but I like like the Mountain Dews and things like that more than like Sprite. Like the Twins and the Orioles, I think, are the only teams left that use Pepsi products. And shout out and condolences to the Orioles as their owner passed away today. See how he said that with such hate? Right? See, that's what I love about Mets. He just he just gave condolences, and it sounded like he was spitting in your face. 
Like that he goddamn did. guy. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's why I love Mets. Like, no matter what he says, he's like angry, but he's gonna tell you that, and he's not taking shit from anybody. That's what I like about you, Mets. Do you miss Maddie? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> last, uh, last question uh, there, Mets. Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers? I'm more of a guy who's a fan of Freddy. Oh, nice. Nice. I like Freddy. When you look at, at Jason and Michael, no matter how artistic or gratuitous they are, it's basically the same theme song and dance. Dance. Nothing more than just them going around, taking a knife of any kind, or whatever they can get their hands on, and bludgeoning their enemy, to, their targets to death. With Freddy, it's a it's all about imagination, ingenuity, and creativity. And especially when he, he gets Ooh. you in the one spot you're most vulnerable when you're asleep. Thanks for yawning. Are we boring you, Abe? Dude, I told you. How long have I been up for? <laughs> I've been up for know, you could have turned down your mic and made it. No, oh, I don't. I don't. I don't mute this. My I don't mute this this button over here. Not I got I got the button. I don't press it. Not to mention with how much of a chatterbox break a pun machine Freddie can be. He's got more of a personality. I agree with that, but I actually prefer the, the, the slashers who don't talk to the ones who do talk uh, because Freddie was scary. Like when he talked in the first like two or three, but then you got to part five where he had the Nintendo power glove on and goes, no, you're playing six. with power. Six. Oh, six. six. Th that to me, I'm like, okay, come on now. What about your opinion of him in new nightmare? Uh, new nightmare. Yeah. You know what I like about new nightmare? I, I, I don't like when they blur the lines between the movie and reality and make the other movies not, you know, not exist. But did you see that they came, uh, they did like a fan film, uh, uh, a sequel to new nightmare, Dylan's new nightmare or Dylan's nightmare. Did they bring back Nico Hughes? They did. They did. It's free on YouTube. I haven't found that, but I did find a continuation of the Tommy Jarvis trail. Gee, a two part. Oh, yeah. don't, don't go hike. You know, whatever nope. it's called. Uh, don't, don't, uh, don't hike alone. Yeah. That something like, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I love that. And I love Tom Matthews as Tommy Jarvis, by the way. Um, okay. So I listen, I don't want to hold you there, Abe. Uh, if you're yawning, so I why don't you, a 5 a.m. Wake up call, bro. Why don't you plug our show on on the undroppables yes so the undroppables go to the undroppables.com go anywhere that you find podcast and search the undroppables jets uncovered part of the uh the new i don't even know i don't even know what to call it and then again. the undroppables has been doing fantasy football dynasty fantasy football forever and when i came in there a couple of years ago and was doing fantasy football stuff loved it and i said hey we need to we need to do team specific shows and I started doing a Jets show with Mike, and it's been absolutely the greatest time in the world. Tommy Jets on the show as well. I mean, that dude, that dude just, I mean, a wealth of knowledge is an, is an understatement of a lifetime. Uh, it's just, it's so much fun doing what we do with podcast format, 30 to 32 minutes, that perfect drive time show. Uh, Wednesday mornings, 8 a.m. will be out. And I'm, Mike, I'm so excited for, Post draft because yeah we'll, we're going to talk about yeah. the draft over the next couple weeks and mm -hmm. once the draft is over we'll talk about what you know all the guys that we got and all that all that good stuff right but once that's over the the plans that we have for the next couple of months are going to be so much fun not just for the three of us but the interactions that others are going to be a part of as well it's dude it's I'm so freaking excited for what we're building with Jets Uncovered. Absolutely. And, and Jets Uncovered is available every Wednesday morning. Uh, just search The Undroppables on all your major podcast platforms. Now, before you go, Abe, real quick, I, brought, I want to bring this comment back up. Uh, how does this not got, not have more uh, traction than the butt fumble? When Zach ran out onto the field and doubled over and fell back on his butt and doubled over himself in that game versus the Bills. Like, that was so embarrassing. The butt fumble was like a thing that happens in football, it's not the first time I've seen that happen, as a matter of fact. Watch Super Duper Football Follies from the 80s, and they have like a whole little thing of guys hitting each other in the in the in the in the behind. Um, but Zach it's gonna be worse. Here's why. Here's why. Because that game 
against New England when we got absolutely ass whooped 45 3 was on Thanksgiving on national television when the yeah. Jets super high hopes at the time. Right. We're at the point already where we we know what Zach Wilson is. We know we know the dude's trash. Right. We're we're all we're all good with it. At that point, we're talking about back to back. Oh, it was 2010 or 2011, right? Back to back no. 2012. Okay. So we in two out of the last three years, we had AFC title games. We're still on that high. You know, we still got that great offensive line, still got a great defense, great team. And you get absolutely embarrassed. And that was the quintessential ending of it's not a dynasty, of course not, because they didn't win anything, but it was the ending of the good Jets teams. That that was the 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 signifying moment of when the Jets team was done. That was the moment Rex Ryan's career was I'm over. Better. That's yeah. that's the moment where Zach Wilson falling on the ground, like, bro, who the hell cares? Right? Mark Sanchez has so many. Oh no! So much bullshit. Forward. Who the hell cares? That is a great highlight for Zach's career. I mean, look. Do you, you remember the play where uh, where Mark Sanchez was was out wide on a wildcat? And how oh, he just like stood there like an idiot? No, not even he didn't even just stand there. The cornerback jumped at him and and Mark oh, yeah, no, he, just flinch, but he tackled the, the DB and got called for a holding penalty. Like <laughs> how do you not love Mark Sanchez? There you go. Mark Sanchez right. is going to come on our show. That's that's my goal. That's I'm I'm gonna try and get that in the works. All right. All right, Abe, thank you very much. And I will talk to you Tuesday night before we go live on this channel at 10, 10 PM. I will talk to you. We will record for Wednesday morning uh, on the undroppables. Peace out. There he goes. All right. Infrared says J E T S jets, jets, jets. And since he did that, I am going to hit the jets chant real quick. Jets, jets, jets. jets. And I am officially going to gift those five memberships to people who have uh, hit the, uh, uh, you have to go down and accept gifted memberships, but here we go. I'm gifting five memberships and I think it will tell me who got gifted memberships. Let's see here. Uh, Lisa got one. Infrared got one. Red John got one. Joe the Jet got one. And Jets set for life. We're all gifted memberships. Congratulations. I don't know. There it is. Congratulations. You know what? I, I got I to gotta figure out something here. You know what? I've played the Jets chant enough. Let's play uh, instead this. Uh, I have another channel called the Goat Gazette. Let's play the Goats Home Run song, which is actually the Hartford Yard Goats uh, I'm sorry, which is the Hartford Whalers goal song. So here we go. Congratulations, everybody who got gifted a membership. Uh, you can now watch the replays of the Tuesday night shows. And I'm going to be coming on live doing membership or members only live shows. And I hope that you guys Join me for those, comment on those, or watch them on the replay. And and anybody who didn't get one next month, I'm going to do five more, but I would love people to actually go down, hit join, and I think there's two levels. Uh, there's the Testa Verde level. It's $2.99 a month. I mean, come on. That's as much. That's less than a friggin' Starbucks a medium mocha, okay? $2.99. That's the Testa Verde level. And then there's the Namath level, which I believe is $4.99. And you get a few extra things in that. But thank you guys uh, for sticking around. I hope you've all hit those thumbs up buttons. I really do appreciate everybody being here tonight. And I appreciate Mets being here. Mets, what's going on in the rest of sports? Are the Knicks playing right now? What's going they on? They beat the Nets earlier this afternoon. And we never even finished the trivia thing with Green. Uh, do you know those players? Are you? I mean, you're a Giants fan. I know some of them. I, I watched a lot of jet ball in the 90s. All right, then I'm going to ask you those questions. 
Uh, Valerie quickly says, imagine being a Jets fan in Florida. That's heart, man. Absolutely. Uh, if you guys are just tuning in, I talked to Ian from Jets Central earlier in the show. I asked him all the questions that I've been asking Honest Dave and that I'm asking Mets now. Uh, and he said he he wants to come on again next week so that he can talk to me and Maddie. If Maddie still has a job, by the way, uh, we'll see about that. Uh, but uh, I'm going to now ask the Jets questions to Mets if you're just joining us right now. So here we go. It's the Super Bowl. All these players are going to be playing at their best. Okay, that's very important. They're not going to be their average. It's not going to be what it's their best you've seen them. Who are you putting at quarterback Mets for the Jets in the Super Bowl? Vinny Testaverde or Chad Pennington? And tell me why. Mm, Vinny, you need the ex you need a good experienced hand in that case. I mean, sure, he's a little he, he's the KG vet. I mean, Penny, yeah, he's got the younger arm, but at his best, he can be very very erratic when he throws it. So you're going with Old reliable Vinny. Damn right. I love how everybody went with Vinny. I think. Oh no, who? I think did, someone went with Penny. I think it was Abe. I think Abe might have went with Bennington. But most, I think, I think Testaverde took uh, the overall on that one, and I, I completely agree with you. You gotta go. You gotta go, Vinny. Uh, he doesn't get rattled like like in the Monday Night Miracle. He had thrown like three interceptions or whatever in the first three quarters. Then he comes out and throws four touchdown passes, no interception, and throws for like four hundred yards in the fourth quarter. So a big John Jumbo, which no. Um, oh yeah, threw the one to Jumbo. Absolutely. All right, Mets. Here we go. You got to have one of them in the backfield. You're running back in the Super Bowl at their best. Who are you taking, Brees Hall or Hall of Famer Curtis Martin? Curtis. I mean, Brees is fast, but when you look at durability, he can be a little spotty. So I'm going with Seamart. All right, and then I think he did run the table, but once again, um, I'm putting up him up against Brees Hall. Maybe I should have done Freeman McNeil. Maybe I should have done another uh, a Jets running back, uh, but, uh, you know, maybe met some Matt Snell, something like that, but Brees Hall has plenty of years to prove himself to be at the level of Curtis Martin, so maybe in five, ten years, we'll all change our minds, but as of now, Mets is right. You got to go with Curtis Martin, Hall of Famer. Uh, now, do you do you remember watching Toon play, or were you too were you not born? I you too young? wasn't. I was only an infant when he was playing. Okay, then I'll give what everybody else said: Wayne Corbett or Garrett Wilson at wide receiver in the in the Super Bowl at their best. Who are you having catching the ball? Hmm. By the way, thank you, Richard from New Jersey. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, say, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the I'm thumbs up, Garrett. You're going to go Garrett over Corbett. Uh-huh. Okay, I, do, do you know, have a reason? That's good. Good, but we need need an explosion. We need speed in the back, in the front line. And Corbett, even in his best, he wasn't the fastest of runners. No, but you know what? You know, Garrett, you're you're right. Overall, Garrett is probably the better receiver. But Wayne Corbett, you could count on whether it was to make a spectacular catch or make an easy catch. Wayne Corbett was always there for that third down, something like that. But I respect your uh, I respect your choice. I think overall history will prove that Garrett Wilson is the better wide receiver. But Corbett, man, he's just he's just beloved by Jets fans. And I understand why people why people take him. Uh, and, and finally, here it is, Mets. It's the Super Bowl. Gotta love Mike. I hope you're talking about me. The one where you made fun of me in Fred there. I, I was hoping you weren't talking about me here. I'm hoping you're talking about me. Gotta love Mike. Um, it's the Super Bowl, Mets. You gotta put one of them behind center. Are you putting in Zach Wilson or Sam Darnold? I hate both of them. I would rather have Michael Myers under center or Mike <laughs> well, White. That would be center. great. Or Mike White under center. But then again, he was just a flash in the pan. I'm just going to say Wilson. All right. I, yeah, I think I think at his best. I'm not a big fan of his off-court habits, MILF chasing. <laughs> Why? You don't want to chase MILFs? No. Oh, I thought that was one of your things. You don't like the MILFs? It's like chasing your mother if you do that. 
<laughs> no, it's not your mother. It's your mother's hot friends. I'm saying it's the equivalent of chasing someone who you could be dating and make it look like you're dating your mother. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but it, we talked about it with Abe, and I, I talked about it with Ian, and and you're and you're. I'd pick Zach Wilson too because, on average, I think Sam Darnold's the better quarterback. But at his at their best, I think Zach Wilson's the better quarterback if if he's playing his best game. So I, I'm completely. He did it I'm, a couple of times, whether it was against Houston, Washington. I mean, imagine what would have happened if we ended up getting King picking in that tree with Pittsburgh. That bad old line, he gets run over, and you know what? Everyone's going to be screaming. They killed or Kenny, That's you what bastards. What to say? Oh my god! Oh my god! I, I, you know what? Seriously, I didn't think you were going to bring it up again, and I told you I was going to add it to my soundboard, and I completely forgot. I totally should have, but it's oh my god! They killed Kenny, you bastards. There you go. All right, let me get through some of these comments. Uh, Hyro says, "Hey, that's the guy who cut me off on 287." Uh, wow, awesome! I feel like I'm at home in Jersey. Who cut you off on 287? Uh, Mike, you're the man, brother. Thank you, Double R. I really appreciate that. I hope you you're subscribed. I hope you hit the thumbs up. I hope you know you you applied for gifted membership because I'm gonna gift more memberships soon. Uh, well, next month, each month I'll gift like five memberships. But I watching. What's up? Watching one heck of a close one. And, and, and what hockey basketball what are you watching is it march basketball. madness yeah tennessee texas four seconds left tennessee's up two infrared giving love to honest abe let's talk about how wrong uh nick wright is is he the guy who looks like tom green nick wright on espn I, I I don't know a lot of these these pundits on these networks because I don't watch those. Um, I, I'll listen to the fan. I'll, I'll listen to some ESPN. And then I, I love my Jets content creators like Ian at Jets Central and Greenbean and Matt and Ryan and Jake and all those guys. That's why I'm up so late at night because I don't want to step on their shows. I want to do my own show and get you guys to come in and watch, hitting those thumbs up, all that stuff. I think the dumbest move the Jets can make now is signed Johnny Knoxville under center. You think? I don't know. Johnny Knoxville could take a beating. All those jackass guys could take a beating. So I don't know if I'd be against having them on, on my team. I mean, just equip Johnny with like a bowling ball, a taser, grill tongs, a mouth, I mean, some mouse traps. Who is NW? You're not NW. NW looks like the guy from Emperor's New Groove. NW. Or Kronk. But I don't know who NW is. I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah, me. I don't count that one, doesn't it? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be ending out this show pretty soon. Uh, man, these NCAA games are fixed. All sports are. You know what's real? Another. You know what's real? Professional wrestling, right? Right, Matt? Yep. I mean, we're just <laughs> two weeks out from WrestleMania. Finish the story, Cody. Had had Chad not went to the uh, had Chad not went to the crumb bum, I'll pick him. But I go with Mark Sanchez. I didn't see Vinny. Oh man, go back and watch some Vinny. Go back and watch some Vinny from '98, or watch him in the fourth quarter of the Monday Night Miracle. It's available on YouTube, and you're gonna see a guy like I said earlier who threw like three interceptions, had a shitty game for through three quarters, but he wasn't fucking rattled. And he came out in the fourth quarter and in overtime, he brought the team down for like five, six scores through four, like three or four touchdowns in the fourth quarter. It's incredible to watch. Vinny is the fucking man and everyone needs to know it. Yep. There it is. Jets, Jets, Jets. Uh, All right, moving fine. along. Oh, leave, the right? link's still in there. Guys, uh, yeah, we are going to be ending soon. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through all these comments in a sec. Uh, we go into Garrett Wilson will ask for a trade, and I don't blame him. The second, No, Garrett Wilson's going to be here for five years. The Jets aren't going to let him go. The Jets have control over him for five years. Uh, I would choose Brees Hall over Curtis Martin. Wow, Richard. Hey, man, if you ever want to call in, you the link is in the comments. If you ever want to call in and explain that one, I would be happy to hear it. Uh, he's more athletic than Sam, but Sam is more durable and pro ready. Hey, remember this was for one game. This was for the Super Bowl at their best. Kenny O'Brien. Hell yeah. F I love fucking Kenny. 
I love Kenny. As a little kid, he, Kenny, Altoon, Wesley Walker, these guys were like my heroes. So, it, you know, it is what it is. Freeman McNeil, the Sack Exchange, those are my guys. Uh, the Jets stream on Saturday. A Jets stream on Saturday. And then what is that a picture? Is that a ghost? Listen, Wild Wave, we've been here live on Saturday night starting at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, for a couple months now, and it's going to continue. I am your late-night New York Jets host. Uh, like I said, I, I noticed when I started streaming Jets stuff that a lot of the guys I love watching didn't go super late night, and I figured I'm a late-night guy. Uh, for 10 years, I did a podcast. That's how I got my name, Midnight Mike. Uh, I'm Midnight Mike, so why not do a show, you know, and one of these Mets, I may hopefully you'll be able to join us for this, but one of these days I'm going to do like a 10, 12 hour stream and just go like through the night, through the next morning and just have people calling in and all that stuff. I hope all of you who are at home watching before we end out this show, if you haven't, it is free. Go down below and hit those thumbs up. I would so appreciate that. I want to get off here, go outside, have a drink, have a smoke and see those thumbs up. Just pile up laughing my ass off yeah of course you're laughing your ass off because we're a funny show we're funny like that <laughs> poor man's carson palmer they're both ginger i have a ginger daughter it's okay i call her ginger uh love the mets too hey there you go mets uh, lisa is a mets fan also hot dogs over tacos all effing day ah that's a hard choice it depends what you have to put on them i guess Pepsi, whoop, somebody said something about Pepsi. Pepsi. Pepsi has too much carbonation. I think Coke has more carbonation and Pepsi's sweeter. That's what I've always thought. Just don't get the peeps flavor. <laughs> no, absolutely not. You know what? Uh, I can't really, I have a fridge in my studio, like a mini fridge. And Pepsi, the, they released, um, like a year ago, they released these like soda fountain, like ice cream pop shop, you know, like from the 50s style uh, mm -hmm. things. And the Pepsi had like a Pepsi black cherry float. That was a good soda. I really liked that one. I found the nitro one to be pretty weird. Oh, I didn't like that at all. Because those nitro ones, they're like, uh, they're not carbonated. It's like, it's like, it's like whenever I'd go over to my grandmother's house because she didn't really drink soda, um, I'd always go for her two liter and it'd always be fl flat. I love you, Grandma Ruth. <laughs> but her Pepsi was blue to be honest oh yeah that wasn't bad pepsi blue wasn't bad uh yeah pepsi others i feel are better yeah so like coca-cola i love it's my favorite soda or cherry coke but but when you get to pepsi you start getting those mountain dews and other things and i think the other pepsi brands are better than the other coca-cola brands I mean, except dasani dasani is uh, now get out of here i don't like that fake water i want spring water i want poland spring that's that more for i'm more of a mineral water guy and i just got and i have some topo chico what is it topo chico it's a mineral water oh okay yeah no i only at this point do spring water actually actually my house's tap is really good like people come over and they're like wow your tap water is really good um and i agree it, you know whatever but and there it is folks look i gave out five gifted memberships to this channel i'm hoping that some of you people can go down below and join it's like 2.99 at the at the testaverde level and it's 2.99 a month that is literally like i said it is less than going to starbucks and buying a mocha it, it, you know and it just it helps out the show it shows support uh, if, if you can't afford the 2 2.99 a month that's okay hit the thumbs up button hit the thumbs up button we are finally catching up lisa thank you oh yeah you were gifted a membership i believe thank you for tabs on us. um Monique, congratulations. Uh, absolutely. And uh, hopefully, Monique, hopefully, if you can't join next month, I'm going to do it again. Hopefully, you're one of those people because I know you are loyal. Wilson, but he'll scare the hell out of you all game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got we got to wrap this one up. Uh, what else? I want to make sure I did everything. We, we, we're giving away Maddie's job. We'll find out who wins this and they wins that next week. We talked to Ian from jet central. I got honest Abon. I got Mets on. I'm happy about that. Mets. 
thank you so much for being on the show again we really do appreciate when you come on and like i said it's become a thing i'm always gonna have to give you a hard time for being a, a giants fan uh but it's just become part of the stick you know what i'm saying yeah so have a good night and hopefully i'll see you on tuesday night or next saturday okay <laughs> look how excited he is all right ladies and gentlemen by the way none of you guessed the game actually actually Mets did but Mets was already i ordered the stickers the 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 the, the, the there it is that that logo you see up there the midnight mike show logo up in the corner i got uh like four by three uh, uh stickers made of that and then i also have the the, the midnight mike show um um mcm logo i still have a few of those left over so uh when those come in uh i'm gonna get some of those out to our our, our regular listeners uh maddie's gonna get a few for his family i'm gonna send probably i'm gonna send one to mets i'm gonna send one to honest abe i'm gonna send one to tim who guessed the game right um but the game behind me ladies and gentlemen is the uh oh hold on the game behind me is the New York Jets versus the Cincinnati Bengals in the 2009 uh, wild card playoffs. Jets right now up 24 to 14 uh, with four minutes left. And I believe that was the ending score. I haven't watched this game since it happened. They're checking. Look, they're checking Lavernius goals. They're checking to see if he has a concussion. They're doing the, the this thing. Great show, Mike. Richard from Jersey. Hell yeah, man, dude. That was my brother's name. My little brother, Richard, up in heaven. I love him. Uh, everything I do with the Jets is in honor of him. And uh, so your name, he was a huge Jets fan. He lived in Jersey. Um, I lost him a couple years ago. Uh, and everything I do uh, for the Jets is 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 partially in honor of him. And since I'm doing this, you know what? I might as well show you show you a picture of him. Here it is. So check this out. This was us. And I've shown this before on the show a long time ago, but I think I also have an updated picture. Um, this was during the 98 season when we played at home against the New England Patriots. That's me in the number seven jersey. It's personalized, by the way. He also got a personalized number 10 jersey, which is now beautifully framed right next to me on my wall. Um, I look at it all the time and think of him. That's my little brother, obviously, standing there, and that's my dad in the coveralls. With the uh, this is the season they switched over. They went back to the throwback Namath era. So my dad still has the the '97 and prior Jet stuff. You see the hoodie uh, right there, and the he has like a, a do rag Hulk Hogan do rag uh, there for um for the Jets. Uh, but this was during the Patriots game, and it's actually the only time, the only season that if you look there at midfield that the Jets had the Jets logo at midfield before the 2023 season. So there it is at the Meadowlands. Uh, I love him. And obviously, I have a picture of us. This is outside. This is him grown up. Uh, this was outside the very last preseason game from the uh, between the New York Jets and the New York Giants at Giants Stadium. That was, yeah. So, Richard, I'm always thinking of you. And... Uh, I'm I'm happy that I I don't think I don't think I ever talked about him on the show um about him passing because it, it 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 is it is upsetting obviously um having your little brother uh pass away but uh I'm glad that uh, Richard from 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 Jersey reminded me of my brother and I could share that story with you guys and I'm glad it was here at the end of the show uh because obviously I don't want to bum everybody out earlier in the show when we did great stuff like you know win maddie's job and have ian on and all that stuff but yes uh great show mike i really do appreciate it uh you coming on and uh and talking to me so sorry mike it's okay hey man look it happened in 2019 uh it was a, like a day before his 30th birthday and uh I've learned to live with it when that time of year comes around when he passed. I get a little upset and whatever, but he was a, he was a great guy. He was a great uncle to my kids, my sister's kids. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's at this point, it's all just good memories. So, all right, let's bring it back up by playing the shittiest jet song ever. Go. Go, 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 Jets. 
Thank you for joining us on another Saturday night show, ladies and gentlemen. Join us again Tuesday night, 10, 10 p.m. Uh, we come on after talking Jets. We kind of piggyback off them. So when you're watching Green Bean and Matt and Ryan, when they're done, Jets talk isn't because me and Maddie will be here. <coughs> Excuse me. Tuesday night, 10, 10 p.m. That show's a little shorter. That show's about an hour, a little, you know, whereas this show runs about two hours. And eventually, I'll I'll take the interview with Ian, and I'll cut it and just make it a regular video on my page. Uh, but thank you for joining me. I am Midnight Mike, and I can't wait to see you next time. J E T S Jets Jets Jets. Hit, the, hit those thumbs up on your way out, folks. Hit those thumbs up on your way out. I'm counting on all of you. Comment, all that stuff.